kfugradio.org, and I am joined live in the studio. What microphone are you? Okay, cool. I'm joined live in the studio <laughs> by Alex Fallman. Alex, how you doing, man? I'm well. Thanks for having me, Paul. Hey, no problem. Should I tell them why I'm here, or were you going to do that? I was going to, but no, okay, you go ahead okay. and do it. I No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to drink my coffee. You do it. Okay. Go. You don't want to drink my coffee? I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, Alex Fallman. I'm a candidate for city council. Um, you know, here today to talk about issues in my campaign and Whatever other gotcha questions Paul has for oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. me. I'm the gotcha guy. <laughs> I can sit here and talk to Roger Gitlin. I'm not the gotcha guy. <laughs> I might have to go to meetings with Roger Gitlin, so I'll, I'll get through it. What kind of meetings? <laughs> um, <laughs> probably transportation committee. Right, or, uh, right. Oh, the sub meeting. Trilater- yeah, 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 the, yeah. Uh, tri-agency. The trilateral commission. The tri- <laughs> 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 that's great. <laughs> I was watching Barney Miller the other day, uh, and they arrested a guy because he roughed up an office of the Trilateral Commission, oh, wow. and he has all these complaints about it, and Sergeant Dietrich goes, you know, I think you raise a lot of uh, good concerns. If there's any organization that's looking to uh, accumulate power for the sake of you know, accumulating power and influence around the world, I think they ought to be questioned. So I'm going to bring up your concerns at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a member of the Trilateral Commission. <laughs> Let me get you a little, a little closer. Just okay. A little, a little more. There you are. Cool. Right on. Say something again. Something again. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so how old are you? I'm 20. Why in the world are you running for city council? Well, you know, I'm a local guy. I'm from Del Norte County. This is, you know, where I was born and raised, and I really do care about the community and want to give back and want to, uh, you know, have some of that influence over what is going to happen over the next 20 years in Del Norte County. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is where I start. When did you When did you begin uh, uh, thinking about getting involved in 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 local government, government in general? Uh, when I was six. <laughs> Seriously? When you were six? No, when I was about, um, let's see, the What's... 2010 district attorney's race was probably my first entry into local politics. Was that John Alexander? I was at John Alexander and Drossel and, and, Drossel and, and yeah. Reese and Lidicote. Um I was interested in the race because at the time I wanted to be a district attorney. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got involved with one of the candidates' campaigns. I worked for John Alexander during mm-hmm. the general election. And... That's where I learned everything that I, or not everything, but began learning about local politics and expanded my interest from being a prosecutor or an attorney to um, you know, the city council and the board of supervisors. Why? What sort of changed your, uh, your focus from, uh, from working with John's campaign? John really cared about young people. Well, mm-hmm. he still does care about young people, but um, he emphasized that he, was, um, he wanted to have a holistic approach with the district attorney's office. Uh, you know, typically... They're just focused on prosecution, mm-hmm. and that's it. He wanted to emphasize that we have to be you know, good on prosecution, but we also have to think about what happens after they leave the courtroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, he always has been really involved with helping young people out. Uh, he was, I think, a tutor, or not a tutor, a, a counselor for people struggling with drug and alcohol problems. Mm-hmm. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Drug and alcohol problems are probably my biggest you know, passion within mm-hmm. the community because it's something that affects so many people. It, it seems like endemic to this to this uh, yeah, to population. Yeah, and there's there's a culture in Del Norte County that exists that makes it very hard to get sober. Yeah, there's yeah, a, you know you that. have to leave the entire area just to get clean and sober, mm-hmm. and that's really what's wrong. Um, granted, these are big picture systemic things. It's mm-hmm. not something that you will necessarily get to tackle directly as a council member. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But again, I've got, I'm only 20. I've got another 40 years to stay involved and um, do good things for the community. Okay, so so take us through then uh, your vision of, of what you'd like to accomplish if you were elected to uh, the city council. Maybe maybe begin with, uh, if you would, I mean, the problems that you see in our, in our community, the things that need to be addressed. So, yeah, I like that you framed it like that because it's such a good way to pivot from, uh, you know, it's not so much what the question should be what, are the problems for our community, but mm-hmm. what are the problems for the residents in our community? Mm-hmm. Roads has been a major focus point of my campaign for that reason, because roads are something that everybody drives over, whether you're somebody that uses drugs or is impoverished or you're an attorney or a doctor or whatever. You're, it's, it's you drive. Of, it's the lowest common denominator. You drive. Yeah. It is definitely the lowest common denominator. Mm-hmm. And our roads are really in shambles. There's potholes on just about every single street. Jeez. And yeah. 
Actually, what amazes me, Elk Valley Road is in such it's such a thoroughfare and it's in lousy shape. Uh-huh. All the way out, all the way out to the end of Parkway. All the way, I mean, just riding out there mm-hmm. where it's a nice country lane, right? But you go, wow, this road kind of sucks. This road's something not wrong the with my tires? What's going on here? And you no, know, it's, it's not in the city limits. It, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, uh, all right. So, yeah, definitely. So, roads, roads are a big infrastructure. One. Uh, infrastructure. Uh, the police department has been critically understaffed, mm-hmm. and the city has taken steps to um, pay officers more and to hire more police officers. Mm-hmm. So, from there, I want to make sure we have a detective, mm-hmm. or at least the position funded again. That's right. That's right. Because it was what Detective Doyle. Yeah, Detective right? Doyle retired, mm-hmm. and um, they defunded the position in the 2011-2012 budget. Oh wow! Okay. So it's been yeah that long. And any given time, I mean, we're talking what? Well, I guess maybe nighttime. You're talking uh, during the evening hours in, in the city of Crescent City. Two police officers? One, yeah. One police officer on patrol? What's what's? Do you know the numbers? It's always two officers mm-hmm. in city limits covering a 1.5 square mile mm-hmm. area is two police officers on patrol. And there's this kind of hidden discussion right now, uh, a behind-the-scenes talk about forming just one giant police department with mm-hmm. the sheriffs and the um, police department. Mm-hmm. Sort of a consolidation. Yeah, law consolidation, consolidation. Of, yeah. yeah. And for me, you know, as a city resident, Crescent City has the best response times in the county. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what I wouldn't want to lose as a prospective council member. If there was a deal sitting in front of me, you know, the thing for me is, do we lose those two officers on right. patrol? Right. If you're if you're folding it in with what's happening countywide mm-hmm. in a given time. Because you're seeing what's happening up in Smith River where they've been you know, organizing or advocating and working with the sheriff on getting somebody permanently stationed in Smith River. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want Crescent City to have to go through that because we already have it. It's called the Crescent City Police exactly, Department. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe oh, I know, that's, that's, that's a discussion. I have this whole idea about a substation and all this stuff, but uh, <laughs> that's for a county discussion. And yes, not a yes. city. Could just, um, all right. So we've got infrastructure. We've got law enforcement. What else do you think needs to be addressed in, uh, in Crescent City? Uh, I think we need to streamline what's happening with, or streamline the process to open up a business. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have inconsistent um, building inspectors. So somebody will come in and inspect your building and say, yeah, this all looks good. Mm -hmm. And then three months later, another person will come in before you're getting ready to open and say, actually, that wall doesn't look right. There's mold over there that isn't right. Mm -hmm. This plumbing system isn't right. And suddenly people are paying thousands of dollars for stuff that was just inconsistencies and oversights Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there needs to be a business facilitation officer or a business support specialist that can walk you through all the bureaucracy of opening a business definitely i can completely see the uh, the need for that or even just like a packet right just something that says okay here's step one as far as the legal side of opening Uh a business goes because business owners already have you know budgets and financing and finding the money to figure out how to open up a business yeah and you're not exactly born with the knowledge with the roadmap genetically imprinted and exactly here's how i go about opening up yeah if there was something online or just Mm -hmm. a packet that the community development director can hand out that says here's all the codes that you need to follow or um Here's all the penalties that you might face if you don't follow the codes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that'd be good. Exactly. And where to, where to begin, you know, where to begin, what mm-hmm. the next step is so you can be thinking about getting everything in order for that. Yeah. Next. Because you, I, I experienced that at least with KFUG. Not just, not, not so much, you know, city and county, you kind of do what you got to do, but, you know, just all bureaucracies are like that. I mean, know, I just no. hear a lot of stories of people that want to open up businesses that get jerked around all the time or feel that they're being jerked around uh-huh, by uh-huh. city county and state governments and they just get fed up with it i guess that's what glenn's going through right now and has been going through for what more than a year now right a year and a half two years or something yeah i think it was you know 2015 when i saw their first posts on facebook Uh pages saying hey we're getting ready to open up it was just a few months away Uh and then it's just still it, it keeps going and keeps going yeah exactly so some sort of now there have been I know, and this is a, uh, this comes out of the county discussion in the county campaign specifically uh, David Finnegan, and he's voiced this uh, this opinion a few times. Is that you can say what you will and you can do what you can to 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 make sure the infrastructure is in place, but it, it makes sh- I don't know there are certain things you can do to make a, a a place a locale inviting to business and investment, but that fundamentally is not the role of government. That's what he said that basically, you know, we're not here to promote business so mm. much, you know, we're here to, do you, do you share that sort of role? Is, is it, is it a laissez faire sort of, you know, government should stand back, make sure the streets are clean and, and let business happen or should government take a more proactive role? 
Um, I think you take a proactive role when you talk about a business facilitation officer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's right in a sense. Why would somebody want to invest here? We've got businesses and homes that are getting broken into all the time on top of that. Yeah, it's difficult to get a business started. And then you've got a bunch of blight downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, You got blight in front of buildings. Uh, So... You know, you definitely want to create an atmosphere that it's inviting to business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the city did some recruiting with getting Big Five here. So they do some recruiting for bigger businesses to come and invest in the community. But for the most part, yeah, it's after you get set up and after you're all ready to rock and roll and have your business up and going, from then it's not really the government's job to make sure you succeed or not. Yeah, exactly. That's your job. Otherwise, yeah, why wouldn't government just run the business? Right, right, exactly. I mean, I can sort of understand. It, it seemed like uh, when David says that, I can understand exactly where he's coming from. Sure, I mean, you know. You know but I guess at if, the same yeah, time. To put it succinctly, it's government's role to make a better community, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which means it's going to be a better community for business owners. It's going to be a better community for residents. It's going to be a better community for tourists that mm-hmm, come to town. Mm-hmm. want a better community. Do you think there really is a blight problem downtown? Yeah, I'd mm-hmm. say so. Yeah, there's plenty of blight. All over downtown, all over all over Del Norte County. Fort mm-hmm. Dick's got some blight that it's got to deal with. There's blight in Klamath. Oh, it's yeah. I, a, I used to come down Rowdy Creek Road a lot, too, mm-hmm. coming out of the hills. So there's blight up there. You yeah. know? I'm like, wow, wow. Lots and lots and lots of blight. It, do the efforts of folks like Roger Gitlin, are they making a difference? Absolutely. Have you gone out? Have you gone out and helped him? Uh, yeah, I helped up? out Roger once. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, more than once, like two or three times now. Um it's a Saturday morning. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, I mean, it's so, not at the top of your list of things to do on a Saturday morning. <laughs> not necessarily, but going out with him and, you know, just talking with Roger and hearing his concerns about blight in the community. You know, he is he's a county supervisor, but he's also a city resident. He's mm-hmm. somebody that is going to vote in my election. Yeah, that's true. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he's in. And he's not the only person that cares about blight in the community. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think um, for me, what I'd like to see is, you know, there's a lot of cleanup efforts in Del Norte County, aside from Roger Gitlin's Take a Bite Out of Blight. You Mm -hmm. also have the uh, Tallwood Dune stewards. I'd like to see just a major consolidation with all of these uh, organizations that care about blight cleanup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because, you know, if each one has about, you know, three to five people, and you've got four or five organizations, that's 20 people that are committed to just cleaning up the community. Mm -hmm. That could be a lot more powerful than just one organization going out once a week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've got, okay, let's talk, let's talk campaign. Okay. I have never. I love talking campaign. I, of course, have never run for office. And here you are. You're 20 years old. And you I think run... you live in a water district. You could run for that in a couple of years. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't. I, I, can't, I can't be on the water dis- district. I wasn't born here. No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> water district meeting. Hmm. That could be something. No. I'm having all these, these watery delusions of grandeur now. Paul uh, Critz for library board? Library board. <laughs> there I totally, you go. I do, do I still need a card or can I just like take a book off the shelf and let uh, I have a card um, <laughs> because I, of course I was also a was member that. of the chamber of commerce and because. I'm a Mason. So I'm, <laughs> I, I like the, I have a card because of course, because of course, <laughs> what do you not have a library card? Uh, it's I, uh, somewhere I do. Actually, I've rented I've very... two books from the library and they were both books on Del Norte County because uh-huh. uh, <laughs> of great. course, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, which books were they? Oh, I'm having trouble remembering the titles of them now. Just, One's one I'm, that you can get from uh, the Historical Society. Uh-huh. That's a little just, you know, pictures of Del Norte County mm-hmm. and little histories and captions on all the pictures. And then there's one that I think is just called The History of Del Norte County. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, cool. I may have, because I think I have the picture book one. I've got to mm-hmm. look around for the history. I love local history books a whole bunch. It's really cool. All right, so campaigning, getting out, you're walking around, you're knocking on the door. It's one, what, 1. 1.4 square miles, one Crescent point, City. Yeah, 1.4, 1. 1.5. Something like that. So you're, so you're, uh, you're getting the signs together. What, tell us about the experience of running for office, because it seems so surreal to me at it, first glance. You know, it seems surreal until you're doing it. Uh-huh. Del Norte County, it's not. You know, this isn't San Francisco. I'm not running for governor. This isn't a major statewide kind of race. There's a lot less hoopla mm-hmm. is what I've figured out how to call it. It's, um, 
it was a lot less general excitement than you'd think. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, because you know, you're not giving major speeches. You're not. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is my first media interview, and it's two weeks, three weeks out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good point. Right, now, there right. isn't a press pool following me around. <laughs> I don't have a you know, campaign manager or a spokesman or anything like that. We could totally put together like a like a press pool, like an entourage following you. Oh, I'd anyway. I'd love that. Or that would just be. <laughs> Just knock on the door. Yeah, and I could be, going. you know, the politician that gives those nice little snappy little clever remarks to uh, everything. That's kind of just those teehee answers you get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, I know what you're asking me, but I'm not answering the question. Yeah. You know I'm not answering the question. <laughs> so you're going door to door. Are you getting pigeonholed by people? Are people Are people actually, do they care? You said that it's sort of underwhelming, the response, because it's Crescent City and it's a local municipal. You know, the closer election. we get to the election, the more people get excited. Mm -hmm. Starting off, you know, I started going door to door basically right when I uh, took out papers. Mm -hmm. So I've been walking the streets for a very, very long time now. And in August and September, people were, uh, you know, just generally happy to see you there, but don't have a lot of questions, aren't mm -hmm. really thinking of the race. As September went on and October began, people started to get more and more interested. Uh, at worst, people just say, thank you for your literature, have a good night. Yeah. At best, people are like, Ooh, yeah, young person running for city council. I like this. Let's uh -huh. make this happen. Have you have you gotten any sort of indication what's on their mind? What issues they're concerned with? <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah. Um, a lot of people care about um, the sewer stuff, mm -hmm. all what's happening with the wastewater treatment plant and Measure Q. Mm -hmm. Blight is something that people have talked about. Um, the economy in downtown is something people are really concerned about. You know, people want to see a really active and busy downtown. Mm -hmm. So they ask about that. Um, police department issues. People ask about the police department. One guy asked about raccoons and what you're going to do about <laughs> raccoons in the community. What'd you say? Told him I'd have to get back to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one that I, I told him I, I didn't know this was an issue. I really <laughs> legitimately did not know. Right. There are a lot. I lived, I've lived in like right downtown and there, yeah, there are a lot of raccoons mm -hmm. running around down there. Whole families of raccoons. I saw some a night. couple yeah. nights ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yeah, and there can the, be like, you know, Volkswagen size yeah. ones out there, huge. They're around Jason Greeno's house. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Raccoons, I'm against them. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, all right. So we have not talked about Measure Q. We haven't talked about the uh, the, the the sewer plant. Do we have to? Yes, we do, because <laughs> I, there's just, you know, because I keep coming up, this whole scenario, and I'm reminded every time I think about it and think through the whole shebang from the beginning, you know, and... and, and Everything, including Donna Westfall and and, and D Dub. D I, I love Donna. <laughs> Donna is, I think, she should get most valuable most valuable citizen. I think, uh, but uh, um, I'm reminded of Blake in scores. Uh, I think this was from earlier this year. He said this at one point, talking about uh, when they first started discussing uh, what eventually became, you know, the, the proposed rate changes and rate structuring changes in Measure Q. Was that, you know, we we needed a Hyundai and we built a Lexus. And now we have to pay for it. Okay. And and I thought that's that's an interesting analogy. And of course, or metaphor goes into also, um, you know, it being two thousand eight, and this is the absolute worst time to invest in anything. Yeah. And and all sorts of things, and whether or not there was criminality involved, as Donna goes goes on about all the time, and it, I whatever. It's just this whole incredible thing. What are your thoughts on this? How how. How do we deal with the fact that there's $43 million that needs to be paid off by, what, 3,400 users? Essentially, this is, um, you know, I don't like talking about Measure Q because I don't want to force people to agree or disagree with me on it. Okay. It's a ballot proposition, mm -hmm. and frankly, I could come out one way, and then all the people that agree with me are going to say yay, and all mm -hmm. the people that disagree are going to say no. Fact of the matter is, is that my vote doesn't mean any more than any other city resident's mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. So people get all enamored with what does the city council candidate have to say about it? It's like, well, no more or less than what you have to say about it. Mm -hmm. As far as the situation goes, uh, it demonstrates an extreme incompetence in government. So what happened is the sewer plant was built in the late 50s, I think 56 or 57. Mm -hmm. We got cease and desist letters from the state of California in 1997 and then took out the loan in 2007, 2008 and finished construction 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially a 60 year period or so of this sewer becoming, or the wastewater treatment plant being this ongoing issue. Mm -hmm. The problem is that 
Um, state laws are always going to be changing. State laws are always going to be updated, which means there's always going to be new standards and higher standards for things like the wastewater treatment plant. Because the city council for essentially 40 years from the late 50s up to the late 90s didn't do anything to adapt to those standards, now we're having to pay for it 20 years after 1997. Mm -hmm. So is it is it justified the $43 million? Is the $43 million justified? Or, or did we overreach? You know, I'm not sure about the specifics of exactly... Uh, that's not a good way to say that. <laughs> I think what I'm trying to say is if we could have built the Hyundai, then we, then should, we have. should have. Been, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. If that's yeah. the sense, then perhaps the $43 million wasn't justified. Yeah, yeah. But and, and we're at where we're at now. And what needs to happen is that we need to just recognize the city councils and city governments, city leadership for the past 60 years now is messed up. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. need to have this perspective where we're on top of things, mm -hmm. where we can plan ahead long term and say, we know that these things are going to need updating. Mm -hmm. So why don't we update them now when it's cheaper? Exactly. Yeah. Going with the car metaphor, it's cheaper to you know replace a tire than get four new tires. And maintenance or or deal with the wreck you that do happens. It, because, yeah, yeah, you do yeah. it right as it's happening and as it's going on, mm -hmm. then you don't have to suddenly get a brand new car. Yeah, exactly. And and so I guess I had I had I don't think I've ever heard the the whole thing. It's like we're too myopic even in our criticism of the wastewater treatment thing, and we're saying, oh, it's two thousand eight, and it's you know it's the folks who were in power in two thousand eight, and they they they're kind of screwed us over, and we're stuck holding the bag. But really, it's not. It's just Del Norte being Del Norte for the past mm -hmm. like sixty years, yeah. and we're left holding the bag. We have to. I mean, it's the same way we have a, a um, uh, you know how the dump started, right? Yeah. People just started going out there and mm -hmm. leaving their trash. <laughs> and so yeah. they made it the dump. Suddenly, <laughs> you know, higher levels of government got in touch with it and exactly. realized, oh, hey, you need to make that into a full on facility. Yeah, because it's already a pile <laughs> of trash. And now people get all concerned about the Solid Waste Management Authority <laughs> yeah. when, you know, these people are like, I'm just trying to do my job now. And trying <laughs> to think think ahead yeah. and not be, re not be reactive like that and, mm -hmm. and make things that are not necessarily good uh, situations on the ground, you know, not to codify them, not to cover them with the, with bureaucratic concrete and yeah. say, okay, this is the reality now. Mm -hmm. So I can see that. So looking forward then, I mean, if we're left holding the bag and we've got to pay, we've got to pay for this, this, uh, uh, this, the, the wastewater treatment plan. If the criticism then is that government in the past historically has been kind of myopic or just looking at their feet and not really having a broader perspective of things in light of that sort of criticism of governance, what are your thoughts and it's a very leading question. But what are your thoughts on the on the uh, the the new airport? My thoughts on the new airport? I really haven't looked into the specifics of the plan. I mm -hmm. guess there's a the underlying debate of it is um, you know should we go runway first or terminal first? Mm -hmm. And I don't understand airport economics uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> enough yeah, to know. understand like which one would you want beforehand. There's a whole ex yeah, would you yeah, chicken or egg sort of thing. Yeah, but the, but the whole and so their whole. Do we need a runway before we can have a bigger terminal because the runway will support bigger jets, or do we want a bigger terminal because that will support more people flying? Mm -hmm, I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. Do we need any of that? Do we need any of that? I think. Um, no, it's definitely interesting why the airport was the focus because there are a lot of other issues that people are bringing up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what the thinking was going into it because I'm trying to place myself in the role of the county supervisor right yeah, now. Yeah, and exactly. And say, again, okay, this, if I was a county supervisor. And this is a county issue. And it's how is it that issue, this so. came up in these people's thinking? How mm -hmm. is this that this came up in David Finnegan's thinking years ago? Because mm -hmm. this didn't all just happen in 2016. Yeah, yeah. This is something that people have planned ahead of for a long time now the uh, i think there's the airport regional authority board mm -hmm. which mr finnegan's on a member of so it's not like this is something new uh i think at some point we're going to need a bigger airport just as at some point we're going to need um you know new police officers to take over old police officers mm -hmm. we're going to need fixes on front street so as far as priorities go though uh, i'm not sure it'd be my top priority mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. Well, with the Board of Supervisors, like I said earlier, drug and alcohol issues, mental health issues, mm -hmm. general poverty and homelessness, that's where my focus would be if I was a county supervisor. Mm -hmm. 
I know, so, I know, but again, it seems like what you were saying with the with government. You know, you also have to remember while you're dealing with the problems, the fires that need to be put out, to look into the future and to go, okay, mm-hmm. what do, what do we want to have here in in twenty five thirty years? What yeah, would be most because I'm going to be here in twenty five exactly, thirty years. So yeah, it matters to you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, right. So you'll be you'll be enjoying the airport. I yeah. guess is way. <laughs> to me, I, what I what I seem to remember is that somehow. They got wind. The county got wind that they that there was like twenty million dollars they could get from the FAA if okay. if if we built an airport. And so somebody went, okay, well let's build an airport. Okay. Let's build an airport because the FAA is going to foot most of the bill, and it just was a cost effective sort of thing. And I think that's how it became a priority. I think I don't know. Inference. Uh, okay, so you're out. You're knocking on. You're getting. You're getting a. Um, you're getting an idea of what's important to the folks in uh, uh, in Crescent City. Running for election, do you have a feel how you're doing? <laughs> yeah. Really? How yeah. You? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> are you doing pretty? Are you confident? <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling really confident. We've got what? We've got uh, how many? Uh, how we got many three candidates? open seats and six candidates. Right. No incumbents in the field. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. even with those dynamics, uh, that already gives me a boost of confidence. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, every single one of my opponents um, has something to offer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it, typically in Delmar County elections, you will see a lot of um, B list type candidates, mm-hmm. a lot of also rands. That's yeah. why I think David Finnegan's gotten reelected so many times is because he's run against underfunded, uh, no name, old crotchety old men that just say, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to camp. I'm going to run for supervisor. <laughs> exactly. And I, my, my platform is I'm not David Finnegan. Yeah. yeah and my yeah. platform is I'm old and want to get involved with something. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And I'm retired. I have time. Now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we see a lot of those candidates run for office mm-hmm. and with the city council race this year, that's, it's not like that. It isn't, isn't there? You've got two planning commissioners, Holly Uh Green and Justin Williams, Uh which it's always said the planning commission is the ultimate training ground for the city council. And it really, yeah. And it seems there, how many people on the council have come through, like currently on the council have come through the planning commission? I think every single member of the city council has come through the planning commission. I think. Wow. Yep. Every single member. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm maybe Rick Hawley and Catherine Murray didn't. For some reason, I want to be kind of certain that Catherine at some point was on the planning commission because she's made reference to it, I think. I'd believe it. Um, and yeah, I also feel the same way about Rick, but it's not. I know the other ones have. I know, yeah. of course, Darren and Blake and... and, and uh, Ron Gastineau has, yeah. I prefer to call him the mayor. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you're elected, how will you deal with the, uh, the craven political ambition of Blake Inscore? <laughs> Blake, the what? <laughs> the craven political ambition. I tease him for being a, a, a politician. And he worked out this whole thing where uh, he was, it was just brilliant what he did. He got Ron Gastineau to say, I'm going to step down. I'm not going to run for re-election. I'm not going to be mayor anymore while he's out of town. So it looked like he was not involved with that at all. Then he's the new mayor. Boom. Oh. See, Blake. Oh, that's, Blake, he's okay. crafty. He's crafty. Man of God. So how do sure. I? Crafty. So how do I put up with that? Because I've seen House of Cards. <laughs> Have you seen <laughs> This is not unfamiliar I think, I think uncharted r- territory. Right off the right off the bat, I think a show a show of force. You got to throw somebody out a window. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> no, Blake's a great guy. I actually like. I him really, really him. respect Blake. In yeah, sport. me too. Me too. He's cool. He's very cool. And it just I'd just to sit on a council on some sort of council with him, I think would be instructive and neat. He's a he's a neat guy. But yeah, he's planning commission along with Darren and, and Ron. Mm-hmm. So, so why why have you eschewed the planning commission then? I just didn't have time for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm a college student. I'm involved with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I'm on the senior center board of directors. Mm-hmm. So that's gotten me plenty of board experience and budget experience. It uh, seems to me the planning commission, though, has some real power in this county or in the city, at least. You know, the planning commission definitely exerts a degree of influence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's be nice to have some of that influence, which is why I'm running for city council. Mm-hmm. You know, I applied to be on the um, Del Norte Solid Waste Board of Commissioners before. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. as the as the, uh, the, the the public commissioner the public person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and I applied to be on the city council before, uh-huh. and I ran for fire district. So mm-hmm. it's not like I haven't tried to be on a government board at some point. Mm-hmm. Just haven't gotten around to getting on the planning commission. Yeah, it just it seems like wow. I, I don't know. Didn't want to use it to. You know, just for a training ground to be on the city council. To be okay, I see what you're I didn't saying. Like, yeah, yeah, I didn't want to feel like I was doing that. Like either. consciously, oh, I'm coming yeah. here and I'm just going to be here for a little while. And yeah. then I'm off to the. Yeah, I didn't like yeah. that feeling. I wanted to be able to put myself into something fully. Yeah, and okay, I know cool. that I wanted to run for city council. Mm-hmm. No, I wanted to serve the residents of the city in that manner. Mm-hmm. So I put all my eggs in that basket. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes all perfect right. sense. Did a lot of homework, anyways, and 
and learned about city issues and learned how the city government works. And uh, from there, you know, I learned about as much as I could without being a planning commissioner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Read the budget. I've been to meetings before. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I've, I mean, I've seen you when you when you were uh, uh, seeking the open seat, the seat that Darren Short got. Uh, uh, I mean, you were there. You own that room. I don't know. I mean, at least it was nice that Ron Gastineau, at least, you know, he was saying, you know, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe Alex, that we was... just changed things up, huh? You know, but it, it... yeah. And then who was it that said, let's leave things to the voters to change things up? Was it Blake? It, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> the, uh, um, okay. Oh, food trucks. Do you know what happened at the last meeting? At the, last, at the last city council meeting? Have you watched it? Did they did they talk about it? I haven't had a chance to see that yet. They basically... Do you have it? I don't know. I don't have it on here, but I went to the meeting, right? Okay. They basically approved of the changes that you had, uh, that you guys, that the youth the youth group <laughs> pitched, uh, changing the, the, you know, where they can be, you know, in relation oh, to wow. uh, where they can be in, in town. I'm, they see, made it happen? They made it happen. Yeah, you should watch it. You should watch it or get a, you know, well, get a copy of this, the, uh, the yeah. agenda one. But yeah, exactly. That is extremely exciting. That's yeah, it a really major, is. major win on behalf of food trucks. Uh -huh. And I'm... Yeah, glad you brought it up first because I was about to, and that's something that could really benefit downtown Crescent City. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. A lot of people were really concerned about um, you know, restaurants and uh, them taking away from restaurants, mm -hmm. which is where I echo David Finnegan's sentiments that it's not our job to manage that kind of competition. Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, like, realistically, uh, even with those changes, it's not like there's going to be a food truck revolution yeah, and then no. 2017 will be the year of the food truck. It's yeah. you know, over the next couple of years, I imagine two or three people will be more inclined to start one up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's not like there's going to be 10 food trucks. They all take up front street. Yeah, I know all of it. Yeah. Overnight, yeah, you not know, overnight. The, the day, yeah, the day of take time. food truck legalization. Yeah. The, uh, uh <laughs> let's, there's a, there's, there's two things I want to get into with, with the food truck issue, but if you would take people through the work that you, that you did this summer with the youth group and the, uh, um, and I could never remember the whole name of the overarching uh, program. That okay. All so this the youth, was. okay. It was the youth training Academy, uh, partnering with the community food council. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you were, uh, uh, it was one of the, uh, there were all these groups, these, these youths here in, uh, in uh, Delnor County. My daughter was part of it. Just about every young person I know was part of this actually this <laughs> summer. And uh, there were uh, uh, projects, there were pathways that they could take uh, uh, and things they could focus on. Uh, youth, or Zoe did the food stuff and... and, yep. uh, and uh, so the structure of the YTA, uh, I've been involved with the YTA for a number of years mm -hmm. now and I've seen it grow and adapt and change. It started out as... Um, getting people involved with little mini projects over the summer to you know, just get people involved in the community and still some values in community ownership and community pride and social justice. Mm -hmm. From there, it grew to something that would be career oriented and career focused as well as community focused. I mean, the careers that we decided to um, you know, facilitate there were all careers that you could potentially get involved with in Del Norte County. Mm -hmm. So with each career pathway, we had local professionals from that career pathway come in and explain what they do in Del Norte County and how they got their job in Del Norte County. With food, you know, uh, you know, we had cooks, we had restaurant owners, we had um, people from the food council, we had farmers, really explored a lot of the food system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So getting to food truck, you know, with the YTA, advocacy and youth empowerment are intertwined with each other. And they're a huge emphasis of the YTA. We want to empower young people to feel that they can get involved and make a difference in their community just as much as any other group would be able to. We want to teach them the skills to do that. So we partnered up with the Community Food Council because the Food Council had been interested in food trucks for a while now. And we mm -hmm. saw a chance to advocate before the City Council on making these policy changes. So we had to find the policy changes. Mm -hmm. That was essentially the core of our work was what are the policy changes? Mm -hmm. Luckily, the city council had an entire chapter, it was chapter five point something, that was all on municipal food trucks. Mm -hmm. Really? So that was a huge step right there. Wow, yeah, yeah. That's something that I wouldn't have expected to see, uh -huh. was a chapter on mobile food vendors. Especially since you don't see mobile food vendors here. Yeah, That's <laughs> but they had you know plenty, they had a whole chapter designated for or dedicated to it, mm -hmm. which is something that you'd see typically in big cities. Yeah. You know, Portland and New Orleans were mm -hmm. places that we read over their chapters as well. And then we just went from there and said, okay, here are all the restrictions. What are other resources 
outdoors out there saying um you know should be changed with these policies and we ended up seeing that it was the distance between restaurants Mm -hmm. and where a mobile food vendor could set up that was a major one that we wanted to have changed and the hours of operation we wanted to have changed as well Mm -hmm. it's basically sun up to sundown and you can't be within 200 feet of a restaurant when you look at downtown crescent city that cuts off the entire 101 corridor Mm -hmm. that cuts off all of third street all of second street yeah, where could you be? It could be Beachfront Park, Beach right? Beachfront Park, yeah. And uh, maybe what, like A Street, <laughs> you know? Essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you wow. can't be in A Street because um, A Street is a residential zone. Oh, right. Okay, so you got to be in a business zone, but you, you have can't to be, be in a business to a, zone. You, yeah. More than 200 feet from a restaurant. And then wow. the city had a couple of actual designated areas yeah. within the municipal code. And it was Howe Drive mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the parking lot next to the pool. Yeah, exactly. And that yeah. concrete slab that's right next to the gazebo, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. was allowed, but not for food trucks, just food carts. The cart, yeah, exactly. But without a motor in them. Wow. So, so legally, food trucks were limited. You lim- so limited is to be prohibited. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I, f- I don't remember the specifics of everything that was changed. You know, as far as how they changed the distance and things like that, but it's all been changed. So you need to check it out because I think the work that you did this summer uh, is paying off. And yeah. Like I, I think I told you this before, I did. Uh, I was doing video for the SBDC a couple of years ago, and mm-hmm. every person in that flight, in that room, every person uh, there, uh, well, the folks who eventually did Glens, they were there, <laughs> uh, and they said they were going to open Glens again and got a standing ovation from everybody in the room, which All was right. really nice to see. Just about everybody else was food truck. They were talking huh. about developing food truck ideas, and, and so they were trying to get, you know, they were building business plans and looking for, you know, whatever they could get from the SBDC, which is an incredible resource for people to... To, to get if you don't know anything if you're looking to open a small business and you don't know anything call amber at the sbdc and uh, she will tell I you i think exactly that would be a resource know. the city council could invest in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. both the city, at, the city and the county really they should we're looking be. at strengthening community partnerships because that's yeah. that's really what it is in del Norte county you can't expect the city government or the county government to do everything you just realistically cannot expect that and that's coming from somebody that really wants government to do as much as it possibly can for people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I'm Mr. Government, please do good things. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting here saying the government can't do everything for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's nice. But garnering the resources mm-hmm. and, and getting least... everybody on the same page. Right. We had a forum. The Tea Party Patriots hosted a forum. What was that last Friday? Mm-hmm. Uh, and somebody asked about homelessness. During the storm? How'd that go? Low turnout. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Please go ahead. It was a good forum. Um, you know, on top of it being low turnout, the city council candidates went last. Uh-huh. They did two other boards before us, the school board and the Harbor Commission. Every oh, candidate wow. had five minutes to introduce themselves, and there was approximately 20 minutes of questions from the audience. Five minutes? Mm-hmm. You got like a five-minute window to introduce yourself? Yeah. Wow. Wow, and that's impressive. It was like 90 seconds last night. At the yeah, 90 forum. seconds. Like, let's was, go, let's go, let's could, go. Yeah. Give us a tweet. Who are you? Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. Please go on about the, the, so, the Friday. You know, a guy Friday. asked us about um, homelessness and what we're going to do about homelessness. And again, I had to emphasize it's the city government does not have a Department of Health and Human Services. If you're looking for a program, uh, the city government can't provide the program. Yeah. But there are a lot of people in the community that are all getting really, really concerned with homelessness. Mm -hmm. A lot of compassion has come out, a lot Mm -hmm. of public compassion. So I think what government can do is be kind of this grand facilitator Mm -hmm. of the overall vision of what things should be. The ad hoc committee on homelessness is a really good start. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now that got some some uh, uh, that got some bad press last night from Gitlin during the uh, thing. Mm -hmm. You have all your ad hoc committees and blah blah blah. Uh, but you think it's you think it's a good place to start? Right? It's a start. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I had emphasized was that we need to get everybody on the same page, mm-hmm. and we need to have a ten-year plan. It's the National Alliance on Homelessness, or the NI National Institute of Homeless Alliance, or something like that, had talked about the need for a ten-year plan. We don't do any means-tested policy. We don't do any goal setting. We just kind of say, "All right, we're going to build a shelter, and that'll solve the homeless problem." And that's kind of what government does often is say we're just going to have this new program and that'll solve the problem Mm -hmm. without actually seeing how it's going to solve the problem yeah a lot of candidates have said oh homelessness is a multifaceted issue and it's like well that's just your way of saying i don't want to deal with it that's just your way of saying it's too complicated 
There's nothing that we can do. Yeah, it's, it's well, multifaceted. Like, well, whatever, no kidding, it's multifaceted. Well, whatever we could do, it's not going to change anything. Yeah, it's almost like they write it off. Just uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, well, it's multifaceted. Well, what are the facets then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell us what all the facets are? And then they love to go off on. Well, you have people that are on drugs. You have people with mental health issues. You have people with uh, people that are just need help getting a job. It's like okay. And, and and keep going. You explain to us the facets. Yes, it's multi. <laughs> you have convinced me. It is a multifaceted <laughs> issue. Okay. So I think, given that it's multifaceted, uh, and given that there's a lot of compassion in the community, now it's time to connect people to the right um, entrance points on the issue. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. got the community assistance network. Can has been um, feeding homelessness or feeding homeless people. Why is every other group not getting on board and saying, hey, you're looking for a bite to eat? Go to the breakfast club Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you need a shower? Go to RHS. Mm -hmm, They mm -hmm. have pool passes for you. Mm -hmm. Um, You're looking to get your resume in order? You need a shave and a haircut? Go to RHS. They can do this for you. Create an entire roadmap of somebody where they could just spend a day going around Del Norte County getting the services that they need. Yeah, yeah. Much like you know, the business facilitation kind of worksheets or packet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just, here is a very clear, simple thing for you to follow that will get you the help that you need. And that, yeah, and that's not there. And that's not there. Just, they're just, there's because so many cracks. It's, it's easy. That's right. It's multifaceted. Drop. It's yeah, <laughs> the pro- both the problem and unfortunately the solution. So is it, is it that the solution that isn't so much a solution as it is just a, a, a sort of a, an outlook in that, uh, uh, let's let's stay, you know, kind of uh, that's fair to say. Light on our feet and and respond to the issue as it changes. Yeah, that sort of thing. So it's more about Definitely. being adaptive and as a- setting a goal. I mean, a ten year plan, uh, maybe not necessarily a ten year plan on eliminating homelessness, mm-hmm. but what is this going to look like ten years from now? Mm-hmm. Are there going to be more homeless people or less homeless people? Mm-hmm. Are there going to be more at risk homeless people or less at risk homeless people? Yeah, yeah. Are these people going to be in jail? Are these people going to be in another community? Are we going to have a facility here that is specifically for the homeless to come mm-hmm. and use for uh, overnight purposes or to get a shave and a haircut? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The kind of uh, the kind of place um, the uh, the guy and I forget his name. Perhaps you need, his last name's Johnson. Uh, VFW. That's. Uh, I think he's. He may be part of the ad hoc homeless committee. He's he's certainly involved. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I'm anyway. He knows the name as Yeah, well. I know, I know. Yeah. But you know, I mean, knows your grandma. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah knows my grandma. Yeah, exactly. He's and that's what the plan that he put forth. I mean, he did it once. He did it on on KFUG one time, talking with uh, uh, Sheriff Apperson about uh, having some sort of central location, much like the military would have as a staging area mm-hmm. that homeless people could come to. They could they could be safe there. They could get clean there. They could find the resources they need to be put in touch with there. All of it, but it's all voluntary and it's all there. And and you know, he. I don't know. He seemed to get a lot of traction with that idea and, uh, and to build upon that. And then everybody kind of, you know, it becomes NIMBY. I was know? at a food council meeting about a year ago um, when a guy came in from Brookings and started talking about what Brookings had done to start caring for the homeless people. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, he was from a church and uh, he said that all the churches in the community all organized a day of the week where they would have, they would host lunch. Oh, wow. And, and so each church was responsible for but a single day, right? And yeah. So people would... But it was like, you know, there were volunteers from all over mm-hmm. at each thing. Mm-hmm. The mayor of Brookings would go and serve food. People were giving haircuts. Mm-hmm. And we've had, you know, Veterans Resource Days before that are mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But it's, you know, one day every quarter yeah. or twice a year or something. Mm-hmm. They do this daily. And every single church is picking it up and running with it. And it's volunteers from every church helping out every church. Volunteers from all over the community. Yeah, getting yeah. involved and doing something about it. Oh, that Brookings. That Brookings. <laughs> you know, hey, I it's think, a... Yeah, we have the spirit here to do that, mm-hmm. and I think there are plenty of people that would love to get involved and do something like that. Okay, hold on. Let me do one thing here. It's uh, twelve minutes away from noon. Uh, I have been totally remiss if you've tuned in to uh, clue everybody in as to who we're talking to. Uh, Alex Fallman, candidate for Crescent City City Council, has joined us here, and we've been talking all sorts of things city government, and we'll continue to do so for however long you want to, or until the next guest shows up at noon. Uh, and, and he's not here yet. Uh, the um, why is it? This is such a broad question. Feel free to dodge it. Or, sure, it's not or, a redhead question. <laughs> 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 Careful. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with us? 
What? What's wrong with Crescent City that we can't all get on the same page? Does it seem, first, let me step back. Does it seem like we're having more than other, other and maybe you don't know. I have no idea. You're, you, you've lived here. Uh, it seems more difficult almost in Crescent City and Del Norte County to get everybody on the same page. Hunter Thompson had a quote where he said, uh, I don't want to advocate drugs or violence, but they've always worked out for me. <laughs> So, you know, it's like I'm not necessarily advocating getting involved in the community or running for office, but it's worked out for me. Okay. All right. You know, I, see I think what we need is we need people that, um, you know, the saying is a leader makes more leaders, not more followers. We need. Good point. That's really good. Not yeah. necessarily a big personality kind of person, but somebody that's willing to get in front of people, inspire others to get involved mm-hmm. and say, look, this is all of our community. Like a dictator? No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> no not like a dictator. No, like a board of dictators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that always works. <laughs> so uh, a flip side of that whole thing, because I... You could debate that, and I have debated that late into the night with lots of folks about whether or not uh, we in Del Norte County and Crescent City suffer from some sort of inferiority complex, and it holds us back over time. But uh, or right down to maybe there's a curse, you know. So I've had all of these things, but Ooh, we can talk about the curse of curse- Del Norte County. <laughs> That's right. I'm a local boy. I can tell you about you the know about some of the curses. curses. And I think yes, no. I know we have talked about. I do not want to get into the curse. Save that. We'll have you back before the election, and we'll talk about the curses. What I want to talk about is the community of youth activism in Del Norte County. Oh, I could talk about that. Yes, exactly. Is it, is it as kick-ass as it seems to be to me? It, it's pretty kick-ass. Because it really seems well, like there think, are like, a lot I of... I came from that, uh-huh, and now uh-huh. I'm running for office, which... Yeah. Pretty kick ass. Yeah, that is pretty <laughs> but he mean like the forum last night that was that was organized and administered by youth and the true north the true north forum that was at Mary Peacock last night. Things it just seems like, and I'm more aware of it too because my youngest Zoe is very much she's getting very much wrapped up into that. Uh, that there is this activist group of young people, and uh, you know, even in in the YTA program, there was something like a hundred kids involved this summer, right? A hundred right. youth involved. Not all of them, of course, activists or in activist pathways. Not necessarily. But certainly, it seemed across the board, you know, pretty community minded young people. And is that an? I don't know. Maybe you're the wrong guy to ask because you're because you're only twenty. What do you know, right? <laughs> but what is? It seems out of the ordinary to me. Like this is a new thing, and I don't know if it's a generational thing or a regional thing or whatever. But it seems like they. they you know, I think uh, young people you know, never really had this venue to get involved before. Mm -hmm. And now you have the True North Organizing Network that's very inviting to young people Mm -hmm. and youth advocacy work. Yeah, yeah, extremely inviting and Um, seem to resonate here. Young people are empowered today to believe that they are more than just a young person. Mm -hmm. And there's so many tropes about young people, and there have been forever, that young people don't care about anything, that young people uh, don't know anything, young people are too lazy to get involved. True North has said, well, let's, let's prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's been the mission of True North and other organizations to say, let's prove these people wrong. Let's prove them that young people do deserve a seat at the table. Young people are players in this community. Mm -hmm. And now by running for city council, I'd like to feel that I'm doing a lot of the same work. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, I think that, uh, at some point, maybe historically, like down the road, someone will look back and examine, uh, certainly here. I mean, could happen. Uh, you could examine you know, Crescent City, Del Norte County. I have no idea, just in of my own awareness, whether or not it's statewide, whatever. But building healthy communities has really changed things on the ground in this community over the last like four or five years, uh, just with the volunteerism it's, and the yeah. Youth it's getting people on the same page. Exactly. Everybody is starting to get on the same page. Everybody is starting to realize that we have a lot of very, very intense issues that need to be dealt with now mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. will need to be dealt with over the next decade. Yeah, yeah. Youth poverty, youth unemployment, youth homelessness, as well as this community's poverty, unemployment, and homelessness. And it's environmental it, issues that we need to take care of. You know, we need to undam the Klamath, which I'm glad that's um, happening. Mm-hmm. Got to protect the Smith River from nickel mining. Mm-hmm. We got to take a bite out of blight. Mm-hmm. All these issues, and young people are finally feeling powerful enough to get involved with them. And that's what I think has been so. Uh I don't know. The best thing about the Building Healthy Communities uh, funding and initiatives and then True North is that uh, it's not about let's solve these issues through an institutional sort of standpoint. Let's let's figure out, you know, we're not going to solve these issues. What it is about is empowering uh, the people involved and specifically the youth involved to become the kinds of folks who can solve those issues. Exactly. Issues are. And so that that sort of empowerment as opposed to just, you know, here, do this this way, which. um yeah, at last night's forum, Roger Gitlin invited young people to shadow him around when they mm-hmm. asked him about what uh, 
you know, is one of the biggest issues facing young people. I remember him saying there's a lack of leadership for young people, mm-hmm. a lack of good adult mentors. And that's why I'm, you know, level headed and confident today enough to run for office is because I had a lot of mentors. Really? A lot, a lot of mentors. Like who? Uh, Ron Cole with Gateway Education. Mm-hmm. That was one who's taught me a lot. Eric Apperson, when I was an explorer, that's mm-hmm. another one. You know, all my teachers, I had lots of good relationships with teachers. Allison Eckert, mm-hmm. uh, Lisa Howard in high school, mm-hmm. as well as getting involved with building healthy communities. Melissa Darnell is a good adult mentor for mm-hmm. me. Yeah, Melissa's a wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of adults that said, or that wanted to make major investments in me. Mm-hmm. And I think for a long time, there have been adults that don't know how to make that investment. Mm-hmm. So you'll have somebody like, Roger Gitlin that will invite young people to say, you know, yeah, come follow me around. Come, Cause he literally said, follow me around for a day. I'll mm-hmm. show you what it's like to get involved in the community. Yeah. Um, but it's gotta be more than an invitation. It's gotta be, you know, let's form a relationship. Mm-hmm. Let's be friends with each other. Let's get close. Let's learn about each other and learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what young people need mm-hmm. and you know roger's right they need healthy adult mentors and we're starting to see people that want to be healthy adult mentors mm-hmm. and want to create that space not just an open invitation but a critical investment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah they're out there and they're it's it's the flip side of the youth involvement in, in true north and in the building healthy community just being involved there are mm-hmm. folks out there patricia black you yeah know, somebody who was involved and and kind of makes it her life's passion to stay involved and, mm-hmm. to, and to get everybody on the same page so it's a, it's a refreshing spirit. It's good to see that. And it's a, it's five minutes away from noon. Is there anything you would like to add in, in summation and in wrapping up? In wrapping up? Yes. Uh, it has been a wonderful opportunity to be here today. Oh, go on. I hope I haven't sounded too nervous or anything like that. <laughs> <No>. It's been, <laughs> yeah, it's, like I said, it's been my first interview of the campaign. <laughs> wow. And yeah, now we're less than 20 days out that's the good job triplicate the, uh... <laughs> no they had no their columns those were really in-depth call i okay, appreciated okay, that good. that all was right, good right. and uh <laughs> also to the people out there notice that i was the only one wearing a suit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. <laughs> see that's the thing is that's the thing about ron gastineau i'm gonna miss i'm gonna miss the stained polo shirts <laughs> well if bevier gets elected you'll get it you'll get it back all right <laughs> so there are six candidates uh, three seats up for grabs. Uh, I like your chances, man. Gordon Clay walking through the door. Come on in. We're just wrapping up the previous interview here. Alex, Hello. thank you for joining us today. And I really would like My to pleasure. have you on. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was, it was, it was easy. Your, your dad's all over this place. <laughs> <laughs> I kept telling Jason, man, you got to get Alex in here. You got to get Alex in here. All right, all right, I will. Uh, but we'd love to have you back on before the election too. And uh, uh, just, I don't know, wrap up the campaign or something. Some sort of final thoughts. Get final out the note. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. We can say get out and vote now. Crescent yeah. City voters and, and elect remi- Alex Vollman. Remind people that if you need to, uh, if you need to register, change your uh, uh, your uh, location, as I do, that Monday is the deadline, mm-hmm. right? And that's the end of the day Monday, right? So that wasn't just a stupid triplicate thing. And they were saying, oh, it's Monday, but it's really Friday night at five. It's like you've got all day Monday to change your registration. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So get registered to vote. Get out and vote. Alex Vollman, uh, uh running for uh, Crescent City a City Council. Uh, best of luck to you, man. I need it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think you need that much luck, actually. Thank you. Give Thank a hand, you. everybody. Thank you. There it is. Alex